interesting. Thank you to Lance, thank you to Joe. We move on. And my next guest today, Anna, says that from puberty, she has always had a problem with facial hair. She's now in her 30s and a mother. And Anna says that the problem has got so bad she has no confidence, has given up on having relationships, and is fed up of having to shave each and every morning. She's here today for help from our doctors, and I personally think this lady is incredibly brave to be on this show. Anna, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Very, very nice to meet you and Thank you. total respect for you to come here because it is something, this problem, um, that the guys I know are desperate to help you with. Um, when did this start? What sort of age? Um, well, I was about 17 or 18 and there was a few wisps. And then as I got older, it just got more and more. Um, when I finished university, I went for a job where I had to appear well-groomed. And so I shaved it for a while, which made it worse, and, and the area grew. And now you can see it's all the way round and across as the jawline. As, as a mother, as a woman, and, and I know you've asked for help before, what has this done to you confidence-wise? Um, there have been some really difficult periods that I've had where, where people have come up and shouted things in the street at me, and, and it does affect your confidence. And, and it's, it's really got me down at times. Um, I, but I, I kind of try not to let it affect me deep down inside. You just have to build a thick skin. But it, it, it does affect sort of the kind of jobs that you'd consider applying for. And so it's affected a large part of your life? It has, yes. In a negative way. I mean, I was reading that you've had laser treatment, you, you've been told by doctors to have it bleached, you've been told your testosterone levels are high. You really are going around in circles, to be fair. I just, I, I gave up with it, really. I just learned to accept it for how it was. And, and you, you just sort of think, well, I'm going to deal with it how it is. And at the moment, I live in a fairly small community, so everybody's got to know me. Mm. Um, and, and I'm accepted for who I am rather than what I look like more. But when I lived in a big city, it was a really big problem. Can I ask you a little bit more about the laser treatments that you've had yeah. before? <laughs> how, many, how many sessions did you have? I had, I had four sessions. Mm -hmm. um, my late grandmother offered to pay for a few. Right. Um, but they were very expensive. Right. And um, I just couldn't afford them okay. on, a, you know, on, on my own income. And how long ago was that? Um, that was the year before my daughter was born, so it was 2004. Okay. Would they, just very quickly, John, your layman's yeah. terms again, would laser treatment be a permanent solution to this problem? I treat a lot of patients with this exact problem. And you can actually receive funding on the NHS to help you with this, even right. in the private sector. So we can talk about that. But in terms of permanent, what's important is that you, as the hair follicle grows, it's in different stages and the laser is just one shot. Sure. So you need to get it at the right stage in the cycle. So that's why you have to come in every four to six weeks. And sometimes it takes 12 months to actually really start to get a hold of it. But it, <coughs> it will give a much better result. It will find that it was finer, a little bit patchier. And it can be permanent, the but thing, it can uh, come back. But. OK. The thing about today for you, Sweet, is, is it's not so much about procedures. It's, it's about some tests, I know, Max, that you've talked about and, and, and basically how we can find out what is causing this. Yeah. What do we know so far? Well, I have to say, firstly, Anna, you know, well done for coming here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Because, it, seriously, it's such Massive a brave, respect. brave thing to do. <laughs> and, and the thing that... The reason why it's so important is that this is actually a really surprisingly common... Um, complaint that, that women have. About one in 20 women really? have excessive amounts of hair that, that, that cause them distress. Um, and that's like in, in premenopausal women. And that number goes up to about 75% in postmenopausal <coughs> women. So it's something that affects lots and lots of people. And I think lots of people feel ashamed or guilty or embarrassed about talking about it in public. Um, but it's something really important. And as you were saying, it really impacts on people's lives. Now, what we're actually talking about is called, the medical term is hirsutism, which just means, you know, excessive hairiness. The, the, the most common cause is that it's, it's just a genetic thing, it's, it's, it's inherited, um, and it's just kind of, you know, one of those things. But the second most common cause is a thing called polycystic ovary syndrome, um, and that's what we wanted to rule out How do um, we test today. for that? Well, polycystic ovary syndrome, it's, it's a set, it's like a cluster of... Um, of symptoms and complaints that people have. Um, typically, it's um, acne, obesity, difficulty with fertility. Is this the scan earlier, just quickly? Matt? Yes, there's me. Yes, there's you. 
And this is a scan. Yeah, so I would never have thought polycystic ovaries would have caused. Well, it's, it's because it's part of a whole um, a disorder of the endocrine system, which is about hormones. There's two kind of key ways that this is, this is looked into. So the first is a scan that we've just seen to see, do, do your ovaries actually have cysts on? Sure. Um, and usually, not always, but usually in polycystic ovary syndrome, there is usually some evidence of cysts on the ovaries. And, and one cyst is normal, that's how the ovaries release the egg, is through a little follicle which looks like a little cyst. Um, and every month that grows and then releases the egg. That's normal. But what happens in, in a cystic ovary is that the follicles form, but they don't actually release the egg. So you just get lots and lots of these little, and you can see them on, on, on scans, these little kind of white dots. And the second thing is to do some blood tests um, to look at the hormone levels. OK, let's get to the results. OK. What have we found out? So we, we did the blood test. We'll do, deal with that first. Um, and they actually, perhaps surprisingly, came back as all normal. So we, we looked at things like your testosterone levels because women, I mean, this quite often surprises people, but women have testosterone levels as well. They're just much, much less than men. But obviously, if they are in excess, then as sometimes can happen in polycystic ovary syndrome, then you can then, it stimulates hair, hair growth. We had the results through from your, uh, from the, the ultrasound that we did. Yeah. Um, and it was, we've, I've got the report here, and it actually says appearances are suggestive of polycystic ovaries. So, in a way, that goes some way towards giving you a diagnosis and an explanation. And can we deal with polycystic ovaries, which in, in essence would then deal with this? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, support from your GP, they'll be able to guide you in terms of if you do need medication, they're quite stra straightforward medications actually, which can help with other symptoms right. that you may be suffering from, you know, other than. Like regular periods? Yeah, all those sorts of <laughs> things. But people yeah. often find that actually though, that, that this hasn't been found before, yeah. with respect. Yeah, I mean, it is, yeah. and it's, it's actually it's quite upsetting. As doctors, yeah. I mean, we were talking about this backstage. Mm. It's actually it's such a straightforward thing, and it can absolutely revolutionise someone's life, and it's so easy to get to the bottom of it. You know, something as e e simple as the, co the contraceptive pill can often just sort this out. Yeah. So I mean, let me put this... Easy. You know I've been saying this all. Let's put this in layman's terms. Despite the fact that you two have had ten minutes, you believe through the tests that you've done earlier, this is a case of polycystic ovaries, from which the, the, the hair that we've talked about, that has been formed, irregular menstrual cycle she's talked about. Mm -hmm. On a case of prescribed medication through her GP and your work with the GP, this hair would no longer grow, her menstrual cycle would be regulated, her life, in essence, would be different. Are you saying it's that simple? Yes, in, 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 in most cases, there is, uh, with, with medication, th well, this could be... That. Just so, or stop growing, or well, it, will, it will stop growing because uh, the, the 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 thing that stimulate the hormones that are stimulating it will then be removed. Yeah. How, then be how dealt does that with. make you feel? <laughs> it's quite amazing, really. Yeah. It's... And it, but it may be that, as I said, you know, I do treat patients that sure. that are on, on med these medications and still need a little bit of laser hair removal. But hopefully, the more resistant ones may respond. I mean, I've, now I've, I've always with medication. For formal dues, like weddings, christenings, I've always gone and had it waxed. Yeah. So I think if it went away, I would always feel I, like I was on my best dress, I ready so, for a wedding. I so agree with these two, and I know the audience would agree. For you to come here says an enormous lot about you as mm. a human being. And I just, actually, of all the shows we've done, to realise that they have done so much background work and come up with an answer is really, really nice. And I wish you, Anna, the very best. So give this lady a round of applause. Seriously.